So last week I, I, I talked about how the United States is criminalizing socialism because they are. And um, we went through that. The, there, there, uh, that's a whole video on it. You know, if people are like, prove it, fucking go look at the video that says the United States is criminalizing socialism. It's in the title. But uh, that is coming at a time when uh, there was just a recent poll that was done that shows socialism is actually growing in popularity in America. It's actually not as um, villainized or demonized as it once was. More people are openly saying that they're socialists, right? I mean, I mean, even five years ago, I knew that's what I uh, associated myself to. I I knew that, I, but I didn't want to come out and say it because I didn't want to be chastised in public. I didn't want people to be like, "Oh, that socialist comedian against America is touring again." You know what I mean? Like now, it's now it's become a little bit more acceptable. Um, I can say the word socialism in my act without, you know, being banned from particular venues. Even the independent venues sometimes were like a little nervous about bringing me in because I was already a little too radical. And like, so, but, you know, I, I knew that there was a great shift and, and I'm sure part of that has to do with the popularity of Bernie Sanders, um, who brought that term into the zeitgeist, into the mainstream, and 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 you know helped help kind of create a little bit more of a positive outlook. But in reality, you know, it was the labor movement that did it. Uh, it was it was people like Eugene Debs and Mother Jones and all of the other organizers that came after him. The Black Panthers were were putting a positive spin on socialism well before Bernie Sanders was. Um, so there was a, you know, there, there, there was already a wave there. It's just, they associated socialism and labor organizing with communism and they associated communism with authoritarianism. Uh, meanwhile, America is using capitalism for authoritarianism anyway, and, and, and putting out fascist laws, um, you know, and all in the name of, of capital. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like the pot calling the kettle black. Is that the right phrase i'm foreign i don't know how these phrases work uh but but i want to i want to read you guys some of the statistics from the study right 66 percent of gop voters between 18 and 34 hold a positive view of capitalism and that's down from 81 so that's almost a 20 percent drop almost a 20 percent drop in in two years now 56 percent of younger republicans want to uh, pursue policies that are going to decrease the wealth gap and that's up from 40% of younger Republicans, uh, which, by the way, just a little secret, would not make them Republicans anymore. Uh, 49% of Americans between the age of 18 and 34 react positively to capitalism, and that's down from 56%. So, favor for capitalism is dropping. Again, around the this time in the early 1900s, that was happening too. Uh, 26% of Americans in in the in the uh, uh, early 1900s, in 1912 to be exact, did not want either party. That's oh, that's a little over a quarter of the country decided, uh, yeah, no thanks. This two party system is uh, a giant trash monster, and we don't want to be a part of it. And uh, now we're back at that, right? We don't have a socialist party and we don't have a progressive pseudo left-wing party. I, I would say the Bull Moose Party is still a pretty capitalist party, but they did stand for progressive ideals. Um, I Yeah, I, I don't think they would have gone full lefty because I don't think Teddy Roosevelt was going to go full lefty. Was, uh, old, old boy still believed in, 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 in the banking system and stuff, right? He still believed in the in capitalism. Uh, but would he have done more to decrease the wealth gap and tax the rich and, you know, make sure that people are taken care of? Sure, he would, but he would still make you know, oh, well, we can't have this program in place anymore because it's not making enough money kind of kind of deal, kind of deal. Whereas a Eugene Debs who got a million votes in 1912, um, you know, would have would have reallocated funds to the right place. Um, 
total popularity for socialism is up to 41% in this country. So there's a steady increase of people supporting socialism in this country. 60% of black Americans support socialism. 45% of women support uh, socialism. 33% of non-white Republicans. Yes, those do exist. A lot of people have a hard time being like, not white, Repu but Republicans are just white people that are rich. No, that's also Democrats. Um, I have met most Indian people line up with the GOP because they come from a traditional government. They come from a traditionalist country, traditionally conservative country. So when they come here and they look at a party that wants to, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. We, we got to be afraid of the Muslims. Hindus love that shit. Hindus love that shit because what's divided India since partition? It's been religion. I've met black Republicans, too. Usually most of these people are wealthy. And the Republicans will help you keep your wealth. And make sure you never see any of the dirty pores ever again. I've, I've done gigs for these people. <laughs> I did a gig. I, I've done birthday parties in people's basements where I literally walked up the front door and I said, Hi, I'm Krish. I'm the comedian you guys hired for the birthday party. And the woman goes steps in front of me and pushes me out of the doorway right like i'm not in the doorway or, like i'm standing in front of the door right like like you would if you were like hello how you doing pushes me out so that i'm not even close to the door and goes oh you can't come in through the front door go around to the back yo indians invented classism dog like that's <laughs> So of course you're going to vote conservative, but 33% of non-white Republicans believe that socialism is a good thing, that we need more socialist principles in this country. And this is coming a week later, a week after the Biden administration has demonized socialism and equated it with domestic terrorism and violence. And what else did he? Uh, oh, neo-Nazis. Because because the Navy counterterrorism training is calling is equating socialism with neo Nazis. I don't remember in my education system. Uh, and again, I want to clarify when I when I criticize the education system, I am not criticizing teachers. I've had some pretty phenomenal fucking teachers that have taught me how to think critically outside of the education system. That wasn't part of their curriculum. In fact, when they slipped outside the curriculum and taught us some shit that we that wasn't approved by the education board, they got in trouble for it. But uh, I don't remember learning positive things about socialism. I do remember learning positive things about uh, the, the markets and capitalism. And, uh, and you know, the depression is just a crash. Oh, no, something happened bad. It was bad. But uh, well, banks are still good, even though the Fed literally manufactured the Great Depression. They ran a couple tests before that. There's also videos on my channel about the Fed. Uh, talking about the history of the Fed. This, this is a new phase of McCarthyism. This is what they did. A hundred years ago, okay, a hundred years ago, they were demonizing socialists. Why? Because socialists have always been on the front lines to help the American people, to help people in general, to help decrease that wealth gap so that so that the power is in the workers' hands. So workers see, uh, seize the means of production. That's dangerous. That's scary, especially to a country that is run by corporate influence, that is run by money, a government system that is controlled by capitalism, that is controlled by incredible wealth, giving workers to power, giving average citizens power is fucking terrifying. They do not want that, so they demonize the ever-living shit out of it. And it's coming at a time where we're looking at Medicare for all, universal health care being a, one of the most popular things. 
72% of people that took a fucking Fox News poll said that they wanted Medicare for all. 72% of people that watch Fox News. Those are primarily conservatives. What was Joe Biden's thing? I'll veto it. The DNC came out and said, "Never, no, Medicare for all will never be part of our platform. Why are you still part of this party? Democrats don't hate Republicans. Democrats hate socialists and progressives. They always have. Woodrow Wilson uh, passed the Espionage Act not because he wanted to stop Republicans, because he wanted to stop anti-war socialists. Because they wrapped up the war argument to labor. And by claiming that socialism and anything that criticizes capitalism is domestic terror or domestic violence or domestic violence extremism is fascism. You're thought policing. You're saying what people can and can't believe in. In the freest country in the world, you're not allowed to be a socialist. Joe Biden proved to be himself to be a outright fascist a week ago. And where are the Democrats on that? Please, if you're a Democrat, comment on this. Let me know where you're at. Have, do you know about the fact that socialism is being criminalized? Do you know about the United States just seizing websites of foreign press and then bombing the shit out of that uh, uh, and, and bombing the shit out of countries uh, that they don't have any business being in and blaming it on another country whose press they stole, whose media outlets, websites they seized. So now you can't get their their point of view, their perspective. Iran has sanctions that America refuses to lift. Joe Biden refuses to lift from the Trump era. So how is he different than Trump if he's not going to un like Trump started undoing a bunch of shit that Obama did? I mean, not like what Obama did was all that great. But now Biden's not even undoing the shit that Trump did, because what Trump did in certain cases was exactly what Biden wanted. Was exactly what the Democrats wanted, was exactly what the CIA wanted. So why would he undo that? The sanctions are important. They need to be on there. Yeah, during a pandemic. Let's put economic sanctions on countries so that they can't get the aid that they need. How are we the good guys in this? How is Joe Biden better than Trump in this? 41% of all Americans believe that socialism is a good thing, and that number is climbing. To the point, by, by, the, by the end of the year, I think it'll be well over 50%. And yet Joe Biden wants to say that if you believe in socialism and criticize capitalism, if you're a socialist, if you're a Marxist, or if you're any of these, if you're anything that falls under the framework of that, you're domestic violence extremist. That's, you're, you're a fascist. That's it. Joe, that, there's no other candy-coated way of saying it. Joe Biden is a fascist. This is what we warned you about. Again, I will ask you this just like I asked last week. When the fuck are people going to start abandoning the Democratic Party? What is it going to take for them to abandon it? Do we literally have to have fucking armed people walking around the streets, the military knocking on people's doors to make sure that they're meeting curfew? Is that what needs to happen? Because even then, I think I know some Democrats that would be like, well, you know, let me. I know some centrists that would be like, let me justify fascism for you. No, there is no justification to it. Joe Biden wants to make Medicare for all and Social Security illegal. And one pathway to do that is by criminalizing the philosophy that that falls under. Oh, and if you want to if you want to sit there and say, well, socialism never works and it's the, it's the uh, philosophy of violence. First of all, what you're describing is authoritarianism and militarism, which is what America operates under. And second of all, we've never seen a truly communist or socialist government system. We just haven't. We've seen communist philosophies wrapped into authoritarianism, but that doesn't mean that that's what communism is. I mean, look at capitalism, right? People, the people will fucking swear up and down that capitalism is incredible. But capitalism is always wrapped up in fascism. Because in order to make infinite profits, it's all about exploitation. So you use propaganda to exploit a bunch of people. 
and keep them subservient. That's what fascism is. You're a dictator. And the government system in America is set up exactly like that. Under this, we've 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 breached socialists have breached this thing and helped it not become a total dictatorship where we're li everybody's living in abject poverty and there are food rations. Not that that didn't, hasn't happened in America before. Here's what socialism gave us the weekend. Do you like having your fucking Saturdays and Sundays off? You like having barbecues on uh, on the weekend? couple friends over knock back some brews maybe have a wine in the backyard thank a socialist for that because if it were up to capitalists you'd work seven days a week oh eight hour work day you a fan of that thank a socialist if it were up to capitalists it'd be 24 hours non-stop work what do socialists say eight hours for work eight hours for sleep eight hours to do what you please not under capitalism. Capitalism is like eight hours for work, one hour for lunch, an hour to sit in traffic very angrily, and then another eight hours for work, and then two hours for me to email you while you're at home, and an hour to maybe see your kids, but really that hour is going to be more emails that your boss needs you to answer. They would rather you work 24-7. That's what Andrew Carnegie wanted. Andrew Carnegie wanted to figure out a way to keep his plant open 24-7. Just have a rotating shift of workers nonstop. That's what capitalists want. What else? Better wages. Oh, you guys like better wages? Great. Thank a socialist for that. That's because without socialism, you don't have better wages. We would all be living under what the mining towns used to do with scripts. That was fake money that was used in company towns so the, the all of the stores would be owned by the, the coal company and you pay them, pay scripts to get what you need. That's food rationing. It's fake money. You created your own pocket economy. And these people aren't getting paid real money and whatever they make, the, the fruits of their labor is all going to you. You created slaves that you pretended to pay. That was happening in the early 1900s. And primarily a lot of these coal workers were immigrants. So you created slaves. Eastern European black and brown slaves. You pretended to pay. That was under capitalism. Gee, under socialism, that doesn't really happen. Considering under socialism, there would be laws that would prevent that sort of shit. And that's kind of what happened. But can't increase the minimum wage. Oh, everything would get so expensive. Guess what? They did increase the minimum wage. And I've noticed all the food prices have gone up in the grocery stores. Gas has gone up. Oh, man. But they didn't increase the minimum wage. How could that be? I'm sure they'll come up with another bullshit excuse for capitalism for that. Child labor. Are you a fan of child labor? Well, you must be a capitalist then because socialists fought to end child labor. You like having your kid go to school and be a kid? play outside, have some fun with some video games, learn a cool trick, be stupid, right? Get hurt, grow up a little bit, be silly and goofy. Yeah, thank a socialist because your child gets to be a fucking child. Because if it was up to capitalists, they would still be working at age six. That's what capitalists wanted. Teddy Roosevelt was scared of Mother Jones because she was trying to outlaw child labor. Lunch breaks. Thank a socialist for that. Black socialists particularly, the Black Panthers, which were who, who were black socialists, uh, improved medical research on sickle cell without eugenics. Oh, gee, go figure. Can it, it, that that solves the problem of of can you, you know, um, can you make an omelet without breaking eggs? Right. That's that's always the thing that's used to justify eugenics, to justify experimenting uh, on on uh, people of color in this country to advance science. Black Panthers prove that you don't need to do that. If you say that you're going to help people 
then people will volunteer to go through some of these studies. And as long as you're not like taking advantage of them and doing horrific things to them, yeah, that'll be fine. But you didn't. That's not the point, though. The point is to do that sort of stuff. Because the people doing the stuff are more callous and don't look at people of color as human beings. They look at them as experimental. School lunches. Thank the Blank Panthers for that. Black socialists. And they also prove Medicare for all works. I mean, all of these things don't exist without socialism. And Joe Biden wants to make that illegal. Why? Because he wants to undo, like he's been trying to undo Social Security forever. He's been trying to undo social programs forever. That's what he wants his legacy to be. But he's not like Clinton. Bill Clinton was suave. He could convince you. He could convince you. Barack Obama was suave. No, this is an angry old racist man, potentially with a degenerative brain disease. He'll he'll probably what what I think is going to happen is there's going to be um, a lot of stuff set up by Joe Biden, and then uh, at some point during this administration, Kamala Harris will fully take over and implement a lot of those plans because she's capable of doing so. And she'll say some of the most similar horrific shit as Trump. She already has. And the liberals won't fucking say a dick all about it. Let's look at your comments. Do, 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 do. Oh, uh, Cynical Curl is uh, put up another another quote from the Assange story. Thorderson's computer ability is menial. This is supported by several chat logs and documented where he is requesting assistance from others do, doing rather uncomplicated computer jobs. <laughs> that can also describe Joe Biden, I think. Um. Biden, Holly says Biden and his ilk don't know what socialism means. I think they do, Holly. Um, I, I, I think they do. Uh, because in order to demonize it in a particular way, I think they need to know what it is so they know how to use aspects of it um, to attack. You know, you know what I mean? It's like the it's like the art of war. Know your enemy kind of dip. I think they do. Uh, Clinton did what Reagan couldn't. Yeah, and I think Kamala is going to do what Biden can't. Uh, that's why she was chosen as his vice president. I mean, she kind of carried on his legacy of the crime bill. Instead of being tough on crime, we're going to be smart on crime by sending single mothers to prison for childs committing truancy instead of looking at the root cause of the problem. Cynical Girl says, they will make excuses and justify it with their dying breath. Yeah, exactly. Climate Rebel, thank you for the tip. That's very kind of you. Uh, what I'll be curious to see is if Biden's assault on socialism will increase its rate of growth. I, I, That's a very good point. I, I would like to see that as well, because I think that's going to determine how strong the propaganda is coming from this new wave of McCarthyism. Um, a lot of people fell for Russiagate, hook, line, and sinker. But I think because of this upward trend of uh, popularity with socialism, it's going to become harder uh, for him to justify this stuff. The hope I have, and I don't know if this will be a reality, the hope I have is people start getting a little bit more educated on socialism. They start realizing how much socialism there is in our society already that's being hidden and how much of that credit has been given to capitalism instead. You know what I mean? Um, because the way that they do this is not... 
they kind of do they kind of do it in this in this really tricky way where they go yeah you know uh, america doesn't have child labor and and we have this 8 hour work day and we have these weekends and really it's because of the bosses the bosses saw it in their heart they saw how hard these people were working and they were like you know i want to do good by my employees and they went to congress and they said i, I don't want child labor that's how it's presented in history class, when in reality that was, how do we kill these socialists that will, will want to get rid of child labor? Do you know how I'm paying pennies for these kids? I'm, you know how much money I make from these kids? It's crazy. Their little fingers are so, how, what the fuck are we going to do? And in, and then you saw wave after wave. I mean, people were, uh, th there, there were socialist newspapers that were being made illegal. Uh, there they, they were They were putting socialists in prison just by, for speaking out. The Supreme Court overturned First Amendment laws. Like this is, that, that's the kind of shit that was happening a hundred years ago. And that's where we're heading now with the way that the government is looking at socialism. That trend can be bucked if we, if we as people come together and say, eat our dicks, we don't support you anymore. This should be enough to get a bunch of Democrats out of the Democratic Party. I mean, this should be enough for, for, for intelligent people that supported the DSA to go, if the DSA is going to sheep herd me into this party that is going to be openly fascistic, just like the Republicans are, then there is no reason for me to be a part of this party. That's what I hope happens. Uh, but what concerns me is how quickly people fucking fell for the Russiagate argument. And I would not be surprised if, uh, if the sheep mentality fucking kicks back in and they go, yeah, I guess socialism is domestic and violent extremism. I mean, to say that everybody deserves health care? Oh my god. Uh, everybody? I mean, everybody? Even people that like creamy peanut butter? Everybody? I mean, they're crazy. How are we going to afford it? I don't know. By cutting our military budget by a fraction of a percent would probably cover it. Yeah, you guys are pointing out um, how it's it's work till you die. Three jobs, ain't that it? That's a good point, Holly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, poor kids are just as bright as white kids. That's a that's a classic Joe Biden quote right there. Um, yeah, I I I'm hoping that this trend of, uh, you know, and and what's what's probably going to happen is polls like this are no longer going to be con conducted. Because you're seeing the pop what 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 the intent of the poll was to basically show how unpopular socialism still is in America. But I think more people are learning about it. More people are understanding the history of this country. And and less people are falling prey to the to the propaganda that's being fucking thrown out there oh cynical girl just mentioned florida uh florida just uh, just covered the commie market yeah yeah actually i just read this article about uh ron dick santis uh the old dick santis um <laughs> wants to basically criminalize socialism too and, and he wants you to like register if you believe in socialism if you're a professor uh, I mean, it's real authoritarian stuff. It's real 1984 type shit. I didn't want to get too much into that because that gets into the weeds a little bit. And and we're already, you know, I, I got to start wrapping this stream up here. Um, and I don't want the stream to go on for too, too long. So I'll probably cover it um, at some point this week because it's an important story. But it is straight up Ron DeSantis being like he he is looking to take the greatest fascism award. That's what he's looking to take. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. 
You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gostola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.